this video, we're going to be breaking down John Beast versus Abram in the MCS Ultimate Kickoff Challenge. Really good matchup here between two really good Madden players. I think Abram was probably the one of the most, I guess, jump on the scene, rookie of the year type players last year in the MCS. And this year, he and John are the only two people that made the first two live events. And so really good matchup here. Uh, as far as playbooks for both of these guys, I believe that Abram is going to be in the Cardinals playbook. Now, John, I know that Abram has switched uh, to Chargers, which we actually just dropped an, uh, an ebook on in our school community. If you're not a member of the school site yet, it's only 10 bucks to become a member. It gets you access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks. So if you want to check that out, that is going to be linked in the description cool part about that membership is it gets you access to our college football content as well so you get college football and madden both for one price of ten dollars so if you want to check that out that link is going to be in the description below and john is going to be in colts at this point and we're going to be seeing abram kind of run a unique style of mid blitz um there's a lot of people that are running double mug of course but abram seems to be one of the one of the main ones running more of a shade down man coverage uh, man coverage base so john gonna start out with a run here trying to just get on a hash mark and you're gonna see again john's gonna be in colts and abram i think is in cardinals um at this point in the year so you'll see a lot of audible and a bunch strong nasty now just real quick let's kind of cover the the main schematics here you're gonna see you're gonna see this kind of pressure right here uh this has been the meta since july 15th college football 25 and then to pick this up typically there's going to be some type of a double team on this guy because he's kind of the problem of the blitz and that will allow this guy to come in if they start sending five and eventually he'll send six so it's a great blitzing scheme it's it's one of the more a lot of people call it a disengaged defensive wall it is kind of a disengaged defense honestly it's it truly is kind of a blitz because this guy pretty much comes in the a gap every single time so Anyways, uh, John Beast is going to be going from bunch offset to bunch strong nasty, which brings this guy inside. A couple combos that you're going to see him run a lot. You're going to see a lot of short corners from the solo receiver. You're going to see a lot of this combo right here, uh, which is one of my favorite combos in the game. If Abram switches to take this away, this is normally open. But again, Abram is going to be running a lot of shade down man coverage using these DNs to man up on the tight end and the running back. So that's kind of the schematics we're going to see. Trevor Lawrence at this point, probably best quarterback of the game with the gift draft ability. Going to help him catch, make sure that he's holding on to balls a little bit better. And there you see, I think, two runs to start, third and 11 situation. And now you're going to see, I think, those short corners. Let's see if we see that. Yep, there's that short corner right here. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to do in these film rooms is something I'm personally trying to get better at about Madden is two things. Number one, switch stick on defense and then beating switch stick on offense. So if you guys don't know what switch stick is, switch stick is where if your user is in a coverage assignment pre-snap, you can switch him onto anybody on the field that is in coverage. So let's say that I was using this curl, but I noticed that this is an outside third and this is going to get open. I can flick my right joystick up and to the left. It'll give me this guy, and then I can rob down onto the corner. So what's really important to kind of learn from these guys, too, is also how they're manipulating switch stick. So if we look at this real quick, if you might you might ask, like, how why is this play good against switch stick? Why is it good against man? Well, John is anticipating that Abram is going to be running a lot of man coverage. Streak at this point in the year, um, and, and still pretty, pretty true. Seam streaks are super good. You always want to have a seam streak on the field. This is going to clear out any thirds. And then basically what we're looking for is if Abram switch sticks to this corner, we're going to throw this post. If Abram stays in the middle of the field and basically either switch sticks in here to try to take this away, then this should be open to the corner. So it's really, it's really, really critical to understand kind of how they're reading these plays if you want to get better with the way the game is right now. Because if you don't understand this stuff, um, a lot of the route combos aren't going to make sense. Because we are seeing quite a bit of difference in terms of offense. We're seeing a lot of, we're seeing a, a, a way to play the game that's much different than we've ever seen. So we're definitely at, a, at an inflection point with the game. So we see here, we're going to kind of super slow this down. 
Uh, we get a send three. Now, one of the things that Abram does that is kind of interesting, you see this a lot, he'll contain off the quarterback's throwing arm. Um, the reason he does that is because within this defense, one of the best ways to beat it is to roll out. So what he's trying to basically accomplish is still get this disengage with these three and then contain here. So you have to sit. You want to keep that quarterback in the pocket, make him beat you from the pocket. Now, from a coverage perspective here, let's take a look. This is a roll coverage. I call it a roll coverage. We're going to get an outside third. We're going to get a third. We're going to get a half. We have this man up on the slot, and then we have like a soft squat here. So effectively, now at this point, what's John looking to throw? Well, the user is in the middle of the field. So he can he really is probably not gonna throw here. This is probably the read. So if you're Abram, you want to switch stick here, try to jump this. We'll see what he does. He yep, see there's the switch stick. There's the switch stick. Notice that Abram switch sticked rather late. He wasn't like super early into the play. He switch sticked rather late, and he immediately is biting down on this corner. Now, at this point in the route. This is open. This is why it's so important to kind of know your plays because if John B's looking at this, oh, I see that switch stick. I want to see him throw back here. Let's see what he does. I think he ends up throwing the corner anyway, and he actually is able to catch it anyway. So while that was really good defense, John's able to kind of essentially cut the ball off with his user and catch that. So kind of super interesting to me, um, these combos. Okay, so here – Pretty much the same thing, except now what John does, or uh, Abram does, is he sends five, and he has this guy on the contain. So now you're getting the full send four disengage. You have to understand going into this, too, one of the things that's really underrated about these kind of videos and why I'm such a big believer in these kind of videos, these guys know so much about the game. Their knowledge is very, very high. Their IQ is very, very high uh, within the game. So the reason that that is important is they are going to know slide protections. They are going to know pass pros. They're going to know route combos. So when you're watching this and you see that this blitz comes in, you have to assume that John Beast is probably setting up protection, and that's just kind of what the blitz is, right? So obviously we'll kind of keep a monitor on that consistent. Here you get a shade down man here, and then you're getting a shade down man on the slot, and then it looks like almost like a cover two shell here with a soft squat, and then the user is going to be kind of rolling into the middle of the field of this. So pressure is going to be there. This is really the only read you can make. He does make the read, but he does throw out a sack, and good defense by Abram. Again, John, I would consider John a top five offensive player in the world every single year, if not the best off one of the best offensive players in the world. I think, you know, if it was um, – let's see here. It does. Oh, good read. Oh, man, he missed the throw. Okay, so there's a reason why he highballed that that I did want to kind of cover. So the main reason that John is going to highball this is because of this defender. So w this defender is rolling in the middle, and you get this year with just kind of the standard way freeform works is if you just freeform this up, it's going to go here, and this could be intercepted. So what John does is he freeforms and high balls, holding L1 and left trigger, and then up. And now he's going to get a higher arc on the ball, so it's harder for this defender to pick it off. And then we're going to try to throw it into the space that is available to us. And just sometimes you get overthrows on high points. And, 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 you know, could have been a freeform issue from him, a uh, timing issue, but in general. So, anyways... So a lot you and I think you learn a lot in the first like two drives, like the first drive, second drive. That's where I feel like you learn the most, as far as like here's what their basic defensive strategy is, and here's what my basic offensive strategy is to beat what you're doing. You're gonna see that in the first couple of drives, right? Because the reason you play your best defense at the very beginning generally is because if you can get a, sp a, sp um, a stop, it changes everything. It changes how you play offense. It changes how they have to play offense. It changes everything. So good blitz there. And notice notice this real quick. He's blocking people. John's blocking people. He's still getting screamed at. This is why I would consider mid blitz a little bit more than a, just a disengaged defense. I consider four three even six one last year a disengaged defense where that sent four, where it was like a true disengage. I feel like this is literally just an a gap blitz. 
Smash return. Notice a lot of streaks from John. Throws that up. That should be a pick. Yeah, that's a pick. It was right at Christian Gonzalez. And that's good defense from Abram. I don't know why John threw that. I don't know if he thought he had a step or what. But I would definitely consider, you know, if we were to look at, like, if we were to really hone in on, like, top fives, uh, Abram was very good at chess. <laughs> if we if we were really honing in on, like, top five players in the world, I would consider Henry probably consistently the best defensive player in the world. I would consider John Beast and Wesley kind of 1A, 1B. I think those two guys are probably the best offensive players in the world. And then after that, you kind of fill in the list. Like my, my top five are defense in Madden in the Madden community. I think you've got to have Henry number one, Des probably number two, Noah number three, um, and then probably Dreamy four. And I would I would I don't know maybe Wesley five. I don't think I put Wesley five. I probably put Clef number five. And then offensive players, top five offensive players world. Offense is a little bit more interchangeable. I feel like there's a lot more good offensive players then there are good defensive players. Um, so top five offensive players in the world. I think you got – I think you got – just because of the MCS success, I think you got to put John Beast at number one. And then from there, I would probably put Wesley at number two. I think Astro is somewhere in there. Um, just just based off kind of, again, he finds a lot of the stuff. A lot of the innovation on the offensive side of the ball comes from Astro and John Beast, um, specifically Astro, I would say. Astro and John are lab partners and really good friends, I'm, I believe. So I don't know what my top five offensive list would be. I think you got to put Henry on there at some point. I just don't know that he's a top. I think he's probably a top five. I mean, I know he's a top five player. I don't know if he's. I don't know if I put him above. I don't know if I put him above um, players like Wesley Astro. I don't know. I probably, if you, if if I had to do it, I probably put John Beast number one offensive player in the world, Wesley number two offensive player in the world, Henry number three, uh, Astro number four, and then there's a lot of people you could put in that number five category. Um, I'm not really sure who I would put number five, to be honest. Abram could be a potential number five right now, just because he's he's had a lot of success. He's and he always does something a little different. He's always doing something a little different. Like, nobody's in Cardinals, you know. So, go to this bunch wide flex. Uh, John is also in mid-blitz, but John's going to probably be a little bit more zone-based, I would assume. No, he's running the man coverage, too. Oh. Wow. Okay, so here you kind of see, like, the basic concept of the shade down man coverage that I wanted to cover. So, the thing with double mug is you have this slot corner. So if you turn your defense on a man line, that slot corner will travel wherever they go. So you don't really have to flip it. He'll just kind of travel normally. You can if you if you want. But anyway, what you're going to get here is you're going to get a shade. You're going to get a man up here. You're going to get a man up here. And you're going to get a man up here. And this is going to be shaded underneath. Could be shaded inside. Could be shaded outside. And then from there, you what you've done is you've – kind of now have one, two, three, four players to defend this guy with, okay? Now, normally, you're going to see two deep halves, and then you see here that nobody's really um, guarding. Or actually, no, this linebacker is guarding. This linebacker is cross on the hip. You can do that as well, um, but you see how good this defense is. And the purpose of the deep halves, the purpose of the deep halves or the deep quarters or the deep thirds is honestly to mainly just prevent, um, mainly just prevent the stem curl. So Abram did miss a touchdown there, so we probably can't put him in the top five offensive players in the world because he totally missed that touchdown. I just don't know who I put a, who I put as that that fifth slot. I feel really good about like Wesley John or John Wesley Henry Astro. After that, I don't know who you put. I don't know if Fancy's in there. I don't know if you put Kevin there. Kiv's always tough um, every single year, seems like. I don't think you put – you can't put um, – just trying to run through the list of, of – probably, honestly, Gabagol. Gabagol might be, might be top five. He might be top five. Gab, the thing that I like about Gab, the way Gabagol plays is, is very – the thing that's really cool – well, the thing that I really like about the way Gabigol plays is he's very systematic in his approach. He's very uh, purposeful in his plays. He finds things. He's always got good pass pro. 
So I'd probably, I don't know. I feel like you, gosh, that five slot could kind of be interchangeable. I feel like anybody could be, a lot of players could be at five. Um, you could put Gabigol there. You could put Fancy there. Um, you could put Abram there at points. I feel like that's, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, debatable, if you will. All right, so we got double posts here with a comeback. One of the things that you'll see here, We'll drag, motion out, drag. Okay, so let's talk about this route combo as it pertains to switch stick. If this defender is in a third, what does that mean? It means that this route is going to be hard to be thrown. But this comeback is going to be wide open, right? So if we think about how he uses this, essentially we have this streak that you have to kind of look at, especially if you're in the zone. And then the other thing is, let's say he just plays amazing defense. Well, we have this little high level in the middle of the field. So what you're starting to see a lot more in Madden that I did want to kind of just hit on real quick is there's just a lot more high-low reads all the way across the field. Because where it is where it can get difficult is let's say I'm sitting here, like let's say I'm in this guy in this hook curl, and there's a third, there's a third, and then there's like a, a flat. It's hard. Um, it's a hard switch stick for me to get over here. It's an easy switch stick for me to get here, right? So what happens a lot of the times is you're trying to draw route combos where they have to be over here, and then they also have to be over here at the same time, and that that's where you're starting to see the evo the next evolution of the game. Um, so you see see how he's running here. So this is taken away. This is probably honestly the read, um, but he. He's not going to throw it. Um, there, I'm surprised you don't see a switch stick there. I don't know if he was on a blitz assignment or what, but he's just going to cut this off. So this is a – honestly, I feel like that was fairly poor defense from Abram. Kind of surprised. Oh, he didn't catch it, though. Oh, that sucks. Classic Madden. I just felt like that wasn't the greatest defense. Double post. Um so we're seeing from John a pass pro where basically he's basically half sliding to the right. I'm trying to watch. Um, blocks the running back. I don't know who he ID'd there. See how they just shed so fast out of mid blitz. That's the other thing that's underrated. Um, okay, so all, another really important down in competitive Madden is fourth, third and fourth downs. So let's just take a look here. This is double post with a tight end corner and a drag. And then we have this pose coming over. So, again, what are we going to – these are – it's just so important that we understand kind of these uh, these combos. We have a, a seam streak or clear-out streak. We have this high-low between this and then this drag super late. So the proper switch stick would be to switch stick onto this guy and take this away. But if you switch stick onto this guy and take this away, now we have this – coming underneath and assuming that this user would then be over here now we're going to be able to either hit this or we're going to be able to hit this so just understanding where i'm telling you this is so big for like the next way that you're starting to see passing i mean i personally really struggle um against somebody that has like a really good like if they're playing in dollar and they have a really good switch stick i feel like that's what the hardest defense to consistently beat right now and um, you know, you just got to be really a lot more. You just got to be a lot more disciplined with your combos. Oh my gosh! Oh, ho, 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 ho. I don't know what. I <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what John. I don't know what John saw there. Another good play here. This is um, this is bench pivot. He uses a tight end post with an in. Uh, John's doing some weird stuff sometimes. Sometimes these guys do weird stuff. But part of the reason that you get this kind of stuff is because John's trying to quick hike him. So he gets that quick hike, gets that whip. When you quick hike, I think quick hike is one of the other good counters to switch sticks. Because when you quick hike a switch stick, they can sometimes be not in a coverage assignment. They can be on, not on the right guy to get to the right spot. Um, it's just a little bit. It just can, can kind of cause some challenges. Okay, this is Y trail. We have a drag, we have a Texas, a short corner, uh, or a stem down corner, and then we have a post, and then we have a blocked running back. Okay. 
so off rip, we're looking here. There's no switch stick. Again, notice that Abram's really not switch stick in the corners, so this, this corner should be thrown. Um, he's not going to throw it. Okay. Just going to take this drag. All right, there you go. Almost throw a pick. <laughs> um, and it's going to get touched out of that. There you go. There you go. There you go, John. Good read. But, yeah, I just feel like there's so much you can learn from, like, why are they calling that route combo? Like, have you ever considered why um, every single year the best players in the world are in some form, some form of you, – you could make an oversimplification. There's only been one year in Madden history that I can really remember where 2 by 2 tight was super meta, and that was – okay, one other thing, uh, this, this route right here. This is the speed out. Abram's running the speed out. Why? Speed out does a good job against man coverage. If this guy's in a third, this will beat that. The only thing that really covers the speed out is a shade outside man coverage or a soft squat. So if he does that, those adjustments, then this combo uh, here on the backside. This is a, a unique play out of smash return. So he actually does cover two here. So John has a really good switch stick. So you see switch sticks here. Now he's switched to here. This could be a great play by John. It's like a great idea, just not quite able to. I mean, he does break it up, though, so. He is able to make it uh, or break it up. Gum bunch. But, but okay, so another good combo here, a dig return. A lot of people, you don't see this. Let's see what he does here. Oh, he's flattening him. I thought he was going to post him. Let's see what Abrams pass pro is looking like. Half slide block running back, get screamed at. There you go. Good pass pro. Um, pretty much every single year since I've been playing Madden, um, since Madden 12, uh, you have seen consistently, especially after like Madden 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, right? So we have about, is that eight years? We have about eight years of competitive Madden, nine years of, of history. And in that nine years of competitive Madden history, only one year was two by two tight or two by two anything the meta, and that was Madden 23, which was the most, um, you know, was, was very, very much so like a man coverage meta. Overwhelmingly trip style formations, bunch, U trips, trips tied in, bunch tied in. Those trips style formations are typically what people want to be in. And I think it's important to ask the question why. It's normally because. When you flip your, you know, you might audible to tight ends and mix them, but when you flip your formations and stuff, there's a touchdown. Um, that's the second <laughs> lob streak touchdown Abram has not been able to throw. When you flip your, or uh, when, when your formation, so Madden is passing is pretty much hash, right? Well, three by one formations maximize the space of the wide side of the field. Right, three by one formations maximize the space of the wide side of the field. So, you see from here, I can get to all kinds of different things. Whereas if let's say let's say this guy was over here, right now I can't quite get the same level of what I want to be able to accomplish. This combo right here has been one of the best combos in the game for a very long time. Um, especially now with the four strong, you could throw a little high, low, flat read there. Um, you know, and I, I just feel like that's why you're seeing a lot of two uh, or three by one. You've seen a lot of three by one for nine years. It's not just because bunch is overpowered. It's typically because there's there's um, things within the routes and how you can attack the whole field. Any offense needs to be able to block a blitz. You have to be able to have pass pro good pass protection. And most of the bunch plays, most anymore from what I've seen in competitive Madden, is if you have a blocked running back, that's almost enough. Um, that being said, that being said, um, there is always a benefit to having a tight end. And this year, one of the next evolutions of Madden is also these cheap motion plays. You see here, there's that drag. Throw pick instead. Wide open drag. Look at John. And you see, I mean, I think you're seeing it in this game too. When you play against a competent, a good, 
player with good defensive adjustments, good switch sticking, changing the picture every time. It's hard to score. Um, it's not. It's, it's it's hard to be. It's hard to pass every play. It's hard to. It, 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 this is this is the best defense has been. Even though defense is really not good, it's mainly switch stick, right? The, if you're at the highest level, this is probably the best you felt on defense since Madden 20. Um, and that's what what's crazy about that is the zones don't even work right. <laughs> so imagine if the zones actually worked right. All right, so. Abram does this where he'll kind of go to random formations too. And I, I feel like he does that just to kind of give a different look and force you to have to, I guess, adjust to it. But he audibles around a lot. We got the tight end short corner. Okay, so this is a good high level combo. So again, we'll block, we're trying to pick up pressure. We have a seam streak. We have this corner. Okay, this corner is a short corner from a tight end apprentice, or not tight end apprentice, but just a tight end corner. This short corner will get underneath of any deep zone. Okay, if you play cover two, you might be able to guard this, but it'll get underneath any deep zone and get over top of a hard flat. Now, you have a drag underneath here, and then you have this backside dig. So, essentially, what you're trying to do you're trying to pull the yellows down with this drag and be able to throw this in right in here and throw this corner over here. So if I switch stick to take the corner, I'm throwing the in route. If I stay in the middle, I'm throwing the corner. Right? That's the basic concept. Obviously, you're peaking this slot. So watch how this plays out. He's going to peak this. Okay, It's not open. I already know that. We see this flat zone here. Kind of work through this play a little bit. You see, there's a switch stick, so we know that's going to be dead. You can't throw that. So now we're really looking to throw this kind of right here. Or I guess this. <laughs> there you go. Good read. Look at John. John, John getting grumpy. And the possession catches are really good. That's also gift wrapped, right? Um, no, but you're seeing, I mean, these windows are tighter. Throw right out of user. Throw right out of user. Um, that's the power of high points. That's why you should be highballing seam streaks in the red zone. Um, high points, they just don't get intercepted, man. You can you can throw a high point at almost anything, and they just it just does not get intercepted. It's crazy to me how it just does not, it does not get played. All right. Second 11. Oh, mid blitz. Okay. On that corner. Drag. We don't want to throw any of our open receivers. There's Astro. I think that's Astro. No, I don't, that might not have been Astro. I thought it was. Streak. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Another thing that you'll start to see, especially when you get into the higher levels, is you'll start anticipating different patterns of how they switch stick, and then based off that, based off the the pattern of how you're anticipating the switch stick occurring, you might put a route combo that's specifically designed to exploit that. And there Abram gets a stop, and that's huge. I just didn't feel like there was a lot of good plays on that one. Uh, the crack toss. This is something that Abram's been doing. Uh, something that worked in college football, too. Second and 12 situation. We have that short corner. There you go. This is a combo. This combo, I think, is, is one of the most basic high-level plays in the game. Really looking... Kind of got instant instant gapped. Uh, it's not a good, yeah. That's more of a throwaway situation. You're also seeing why blitzing is so important. If you can get pressure, it just really opens up in the whole defense. It makes every defense better. Every defense has to have the capability to get pressure. And the less people that you have to send to get pressure, obviously, the better. Um, and then, of course, if that pressure can get in quicker. You don't see a lot of this combo right here. 
kind of like that. A little flat. And there it is. Trying to manipulate that soft squat. Gets a bump. It's actually a good combo, but just doesn't work for him because he got bumped. And now, honestly, I think you take your three here. Um, fourth and 12 is kind of tough to convert in this game. And we're going to get into John B. So John has a good opportunity here to go into half winning the game even though he's been getting stopped and even though things haven't just, just not been looking great um, offensively. There's the corner, wide open, throw it. Good read. Go a dagger here. All right, so why two seam streaks? Because the shade down man just kind of forces the forces him to have to have deep protection. Nice throw. Another third down. I mean, you see Abrams. Abrams kind of bagging. Ooh, is that a touchdown? Yep. There's the seam streaks. Also, at this point in the year, um, Xavier Worthy. I think the the meta theme team is Dolphins. I want to say and. If you have a Dolphins and Chiefs uh, theme team, you have Worthy, Tyreek, and Waddle, and they're all, like, just super fast. I don't know if that was – maybe not made the meta. Worthy's just super fast is all I want to – I was trying to say. All right, second and three situation. A little pitch. And you see when that hits, that can be huge for you. It's almost – you know, it's just – that's why Abram just finds like little 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 things like that, man. Just little things. That just attack the meta. Little run here, little RPO here. And now we're in a clock situation, trying to take away John's timeouts. Because if Abram only gets three, it's really not the end of the world. Because I believe he does get ball at halftime. And that can really get him into a two possession lead. That's what he's trying to set himself up for. You don't have to score seven here. Tight ends wide open. Let's wait about ten minutes to throw it. Read. Probably was just looking for the seam streak or something. There's a curl. Watch, he's gonna stem that curl all the way up. Should should yep. Uh, gets off the press. High points it. Throws it. Touchdown. Kind of surprised he scored there. I think he's thinking with the time he can hold John to three. Um, and I guess John did have the the timeouts to be able to uh, take things away. All right, so John. Back on offense here, Abram screaming at him. Almost gets a almost gets a, a pick six there, set throw sack pick. Um, yeah. So <laughs> if John doesn't score here, it's kind of negative because I think Abram gets about half. You don't want to be in a position where you can go down two possessions. So John does kind of need to get at least three here. Um, you want seven. Look at that switch stick. That's crazy. Good switch stick by Abram. And you're seeing, I mean, just the power of switch stick, right? Like, just the ability to be able to take away multiple routes. I um, mean, you try, I just feel like you have to play offense different. Your route combos just have, you see here, like, two streaks. Oh, that's a pick. That's a terrible, I don't know what is he throwing. I don't know what he's throwing. I mean, he did beat him off the press, but that's a that's a really bad interception. In that situation, to throw that pick, that's just a terrible interception. A little crack toss, no good. I mean, look at this throw. Like, watch this replay. I think he's trying to lead this, obviously, away from the safety. He doesn't get enough bend on the ball, which is something I've noticed. I think that this might be – because everybody plays with the pass lead increase on none. Um, I'm not sure. I just feel like he gets a bad pass lead. But it's still a really tight throw no matter what. And, I mean, the fact that the corner picked it off is even worse. Like, So, that was a crazy pick. And here, Abram can honestly just – Biggest thing here for the Abram is honestly you take three unless you can unless he just gives you seven. You're not like you're not mad at three here because it gets you up two possessions. You get ball at half, you go up three possessions. I mean that's that's kind of where we're at. Whip route, easy read. 
Third and goal. Do I go to the deuce close? Nope. Yeah, I think he is going this RPO read flat wheel. So um, what you have here is you have this tight end, and then you have this post. Look at the tight end. Look at the post. User the t user the user the uh, wheel. Throw the post. Abram goes up two possessions. John doesn't have time, and um, yeah, this is a huge shock. Like nobody probably expected this score at halftime. This is a crazy game. And now Abram going to dollar situational kind of in but don't break defense. DB fire drag, and that's the half, boys. All right, so long break for John at the half. We'll see what he can do here. Coming out, and uh, and um, Abram did get balled half. So if Abram scores seven here, it's going to be really hard for John to get back in this game. He needs to hold a three or get a stop. And you're going to start to see now a lot different style of, of play. You know, when you start to get in situations like where you have two possession lead – now John has to – it really forces John to be a lot more aggressive. So you're going to see a lot more pressure. You're going to see a lot more of him trying to jump certain things from the other end of the spectrum and allows Abram to be a little more passive. And so we'll see kind of how he calls his plays situationally here. Super deep speed out. Abram loves these speed outs. A little motion over. Don't know what we're trying to do here. And also, clock management-wise, is he going to take a delay? He takes a delay. That's weird. I don't know why he just took the <laughs> delay there. Maybe he had something to do with the controller, couldn't snap. I don't, I don't know why he took a delay there. Because it's still 3rd and 18, still the same motion. He must not have been able to snap. Anywho, um, I mean, there's just nothing open. That's good defense from John. That's exactly what you have to do if you're John to get back in this game. Fourth and 29. Why is Abram going for this? A couple reasons. Number one, you can get this in this game. Number two, situationally, if you – Oh. <laughs> Look at Johnny. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's how he scored. <laughs> Obviously, you throw something because it's fourth down. The reason you go for that there is if you get stopped, you you shrink the field on the opponent, and so then you're in a red zone situation. A lot easier to get stops in the red zone than it is anywhere else on the field. And Abram scores. Oh my gosh! Look at this! Look at this! Oh, this is this is a rough scene. This is rough. Oh, I didn't even show it, but I mean it was clearly not open, but open. And um, there you go. So now you're going to see John offensively. He's going to have to, you know, I mean, you've got to score every drive from here on out. I mean, there, there's just, there's no more, like, risky throws. Like, you've got to score. Double drags. Tight end. Good read. Bad animation. Bad animation. Kind of interesting to see what Abram's going to do defensively here. I think you're going to see a lot of that shade down man. Heart, uh, seems like that's what he wants to do. This is where you're going to kind of see that shade down man, trying to just keep the roof on the on the keep the keep the uh, roof on the house, if you will, not allow big plays, but simultaneously kind of kind of have some good man coverage out there. In the NFL, I believe this is coverage is known as cover five, where they put the two deep halves and the shade down. Two men under in Madden, but let's see if we can get out of there. Worthy, good read. And you're seeing what's John doing, right? A lot of man coverage, a lot of crossing routes, a lot of double drags. I think double drags, I think like a mesh post is good this year. I really do. I, I, I'm, I'm starting to really like just more check down type of plays because the switch stick can really play – a lot of the deeper stuff that we would used to throw. And so now if you have a couple good underneath routes, I feel like the yellow's back up so far. Having a couple couple stuff like that is really good. And also beats man well. Right, you always you always want to beat man first. A slant, a little whip route. Got that nice route, nice read. Nice read from John. That's a good drive from John. That's a really good drive. Scored quick, did what he needed to do, coming off of, um, honestly, probably one of the worst – 
moments uh, defensively for him in this game. Got him on a fourth and 29 and and just gets started. So, honestly, not a whole lot changed from halftime, just more clock. So, I mean, here you have to – I mean, this is – we're starting to get down into, like, have to get at least a, a hold to three. I mean, this is – we're running out of time here. Little wheel route, good read from Abram. Let's see. A lot of audible around here. Look inside zone. At some point, if you're Abram, you are going to start to play a little more of a clock game. A little motion over. Why motion over? Because it just takes that defender out of the run fit. In man coverage, you know, you're running a lot of mid blitz. You get motion over like that, and then it just kind of helps. It makes it easier to run on. Now we see two clock. And now Abram, honestly, probably good with three here as long as he can take a lot of clock. So his, his main objective is to take as much time as he can while simultaneously not, you know, making it so that he's playing bad offense. He's still going to play some decent offense, a little dig return, a little quick routes, trying to really, you know, lengthen the drive, give John less time. But honestly, ultimately, situationally, it's going to come down to this next possession for John because you have to hold the three here. You have to get the ball back probably at, at least at the – I mean, you don't want to get it back much later than, like, three minutes into the fourth. Um, you got to keep your timeouts as well. Abram gets a first down. That was big. Notice the clock. And now he's going to be able to take this to the fourth after this play. This should be a run. 100% should be a run. It is a run. Gets a couple yards. He's going to take this to the fourth. So, now, I mean, if you're John, you, you really need to get this ball back, like, four minutes left in the fourth. You you're kind of low on time. It doesn't take a long time to score in this game if you're playing good offense, but it is one of those things where, I mean, this is just a tough situation. You're going to have to get a two-point conversion too. That's a big piece of this. Um, and you have to actually hold the three. As of right now, we have not seen him stop the run. Third and two. Stemmed, cor stemmed curl. Good scream. Good. Perfect. Okay, so. Fourth and 11, situationally, Abram has to take his three here. He did a good job of taking his time off. But if you were in, John, if you were John Beast, you are still, mentally, you are still in this game, and you can still make some plays here. Wait, what just happened? How did he get the ball back? What? Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. John gets the block animation but runs into the kicker. This is like story of the night for John. Oh, my gosh. Gets the running into the kicker. Now Abram can take more clock. That's crazy. All right. Crack toss inside zone. Something. This is 100% a run. I don't know why he's taking so long to call it. The clock's not moving. Just run the ball. There you go. Good run. And Abram's probably unconservative, I would assume. So he's not trying. Yeah, he's unconservative. So he's not going to fumble. Um, this is, I mean, that's just a critical penalty by John. I mean, he gets the block animation, can't finish the job. Look at this. This is the block animation. If he just – oh, he just misses it or misses the block and ends up getting a running into the kicker to boot everything out. So, here um, – did John just call timeout? No, Abram did. Okay. I was going to say, John cannot afford to call those timeouts right there. I see a little Durham with a wheel. Uh -huh. Uh, basically, everybody on the streak. Why, you ask? I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe you're expecting a run commit. I don't know. But you definitely, um, here you try to score seven. If you score seven, it's almost, the game is effectively over, especially with all the clock he was able to take here. Not there. That incompletion is actually kind of big because now John's still going to get the ball back with about three minutes. He has to go down. He has to score, and he has to get a two-point conversion, and then he needs to get a stop. Um, actually, that might have been Astro that we saw earlier. He needs to get a stop, um, but he can't – the thing is, situationally, he can't call timeouts. He doesn't – because he needs those timeouts to try to keep him in the game if he gets a stop. He also is not in a great position to onside um, because if he onsides, it's almost a guaranteed field goal for Abram. So that's another factor here. Um, that corner route is wide open, but good switch stick. You see how – so notice how when they switch stick to the corner, um, they're also cutting off that route as with a user catch. That is helping kind of shield the switch stick away. 
um, basically trying to body it. Worst case scenario, you drop it, right? But best case scenario, obviously, you catch it. You just prevent that pick. Double drags, circle, almost a pick, bad animation. Kind of just didn't go very well for him there, and he stayed in bounds. That's about the worst thing that could have happened. He got no yards. He stayed in bounds, and now he's third down and 10. That's literally probably the worst possible thing that could have happened to him. Look at that. Drag, get out of bounds. Now we got to – I mean, you're you're not going to probably be able to score. I mean, you really wanted to score before the two-minute warning. Um, that really helps, but you're not going to be able to do that. And look at this mid blitz just absolutely <laughs> – I mean, you're seeing why mid blitz is what it is. I mean, this is this is good pressure. I don't care if it's a disengage or not. It's probably the best pressure in the game because it's just consistent. You're consistently getting this. Look at that. Look at that pressure. And then you get up, drag, good read. That's the third drag we've seen in the last four plays. Probably gonna see another one. A lot of drags should be from this tight end too because you can't press this drag. And we're going to put the tight end on a flat route. I don't know why we did that. The tight end is open. And throw that route. Nice. Get out of bounds. This is this is about as good of execution as you can get situationally because he's going to score. Um, you know, again, had he not gone out of bounds there, he probably saves himself the time or had that thing that goes in bounds. There's a high point. Touchdown. Perfect. Okay. Uh, oh, and, you know, just why would you catch that? Dude, John is kind of just getting unfortunate. This is a very unfortunate game for him I feel like there I feel like he Abram definitely has played better than John in this game but the EA has not helped John out <laughs> EA has not helped John out much obviously Abram's calling a defense too that's a little bit more like designed to not give up big plays as I say that he scores so that's about I mean that's about as close to perfect as you want like perfect would have been had he had the two minute had he um, not scored before the two-minute warning. Now, this is where everything pretty much comes down to. He's got to get a two-point conversion. For his bread, he's going to call an RPO. I want to see Stim out that out route. Throws that, gets that. That's huge. And he gets his points. And now I don't know why you onside kick here. The onside kicks here, I have not seen a lot of onside kicks get recovered. Look where the ball is. The ball's now on the 43-yard line. It's not very difficult for Abram to get a field goal. I think he might have to get like five yards. He has to get five yards – to get a field goal, and then it really just – I guess it – at the you know, worst, I guess I guess it does give John a chance, I guess, to get another onside. But here he gets a first down run of seven yards of field goal. He's got a field goal right there. I just don't understand why you onside kick there. Um, I'm just super curious. I feel like that was a mistake. It was a tough decision either way, but I just feel like if you don't onside kick there, you at least give yourself a little bit better chance to get a stop, force a punt, force something – now you're situationally kind of almost like if you don't get that onside kick, now you basically have to onside. You're, I just feel like that. I don't love that decision uh, from John. Obviously, ultimately, you still have to stop him. And here on this third and one, you're going to see that Abram is not going to get stopped and he's going to get that first down, and that's going to be GG's. I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot about switch sticking and uh, how to kind of counter and things of that nature. But um, that is Abram versus Jombies Ultimate Kickoff Challenge.